Shalom, friends. Welcome. We have another shiur today in Derech Hashem, the way of God, written by the Ramchal, Reb Moshe Chaim Lutzato. I'm Eliyahu Shir from Chesed Ve'emet. You can find me at www.lovingkindness.co. And we're actually learning chapter three in the Derech Hashem, which deals with the soul, divine inspiration, prophecy, all sorts of mystical aspects. It's really it's very really beautiful. It's things that we often don't think about and make all the difference in making us realize that there's a lot more to this world than we imagine just only in the physical aspect of things. So we're on section three. We're on point number, paragraph number nine. We're in the middle of the, of the paragraph. And we're discussing the fact that God has created various forces in nature to do certain things. And just as it is that there are the angels of good in the world, there are also angels of bad. And in fact, God has created a world in which one can access these particular angels and they can create all sorts of things. They can do all sorts of things. Again, the Ramchal is not telling us how to do this type of uh, magic or whatever we call it, being involved with the activities of these angels, which can be a very dangerous thing. But the Ramchal is telling us that it's out there and he wants us to know that there are forces of good in the world and there are forces of evil. And there are certain ways that we can, we can uh, attract ourselves and attach ourselves to these forces. And now he's explaining to us basically what happens with all of these things. So we're continuing here where it says, V'chein ya'asu al yadehim. And so it can be that one can, it can be done through these particular evil forces, ma'asim, she'lo ke'ma'asim ativim. Things can be done which are not in the nature of normal physical nature. Meaning to say that these angels of destruction, these angels of negativity, of evil, when one knows how to, one can create a connection with them in order for these angels to cause havoc, basically. Like the actions of the magicians. As we know in Egypt, for example, Pharaoh was the greatest of magicians. And uh, he had his own team of magicians. And as we're reading about in the Parashiyot with regards to Moshe, and he's taking the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt, and he he confronts the magicians and he performs a variety of uh, inverted commas, magic tricks, close inverted commas, where he, his staff turns to a snake and various other things. And, and the magicians are able to do these things as well. And even when it came to the plagues, they were, for the majority, the magicians were able to imitate the plagues as well. They were able to perform the exact same things because they were able to connect with these evil spirits in order to perform this particular magic. Magic is something that is real. It's not something that's an illusion. And we're talking about real magic here. And Pharaoh, of course, was the greatest of magicians. And that's why he was Pharaoh of Egypt. He was the leader. So these uh, particular angels are able to perform this magic, vizulatam, all these different things, according to what is given to the strength so that they can do these things, they fall in order to do these things. In accordance with all the boundaries that have, uh, that have, been, that have been placed by, into them. And also through the Shadim. Now, the Shadim are the demons. It's very interesting, by the way, that the word for demon, you'll notice over here, is the, is the word Shin Dalit, which is a demon. And it's interesting because God's name, as we know, we have one of God's names is Shakai, which is spelled Shin, and then a Dalit, and then a Yud. Now, the word Shadim, of course, is the plural of demons. But Shin and the Dalit and the Yud is actually God's name if we make it as a separate name. And this is the name that appears on the back of the mezuzah. So when we put the mezuzah on the door, this is the name that is on the back. And it's, it has some sort of a protective value. Now, practically speaking, of course, you don't need the name there at all. It serves no purpose in halakha, except that it's became the accepted practice that we do put the name on there. But if one happened to have a mezuzah and it didn't have the name on it, it wouldn't make the mezuzah any less powerful. We don't rely upon the, the name of God as if it's going to perform some sort of magic. But nevertheless, what is fascinating is that the name of God has within it the shin and the dalit from the concept of demon, and then it has a yud after it. And what does the yud stand for? The yud is God. The yud is the, is the, is the first letter of God's name, yud kei vav kei. So when we take the, the yud, which represents the godliness, 
and we, we put it next to the Shin and the Dalit, it is the Yud, the power of God that is protecting us from ultimately from these Shadim, from these demons. That's just a side point that I'm uh, pointing out over here since we happen to be reading this that there are these demons. And yeah, he can do these particular things, like these things of magic. And they can do it according to what they're able to do. According to what they can do, according to the boundaries that are specific for them, which means to say that these angels of folly, let's call them evil angels who get up to mischief, they're able to do various things according to certain limits. And behold, according to the measurement that has been given to these forces, they have the ability to do what they're going to do. Hashem, the master, has decreed that uh, they will be able to, that, 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 that Hashem decreed that they push away any of the uh, pointies of nature that have been, uh, that preserve the matters of the world. According to the nature of their situation. And all of these angels, that they bring these influences according to the order that they have been given to be arranged according to. And on this, the rabbis have said in Chulin, Zayin, Amud, base, Kishafim. Why are they called Kishafim? Magicians or uh, magical forces. The reason is it is an abbreviation from the word you see over here you see over here there's a there's a, a connection between these two words because they contradict the family above which means to say that they contradict the way that the heavenly forces work for example the based in shalmaila the heavenly courts decree a certain thing, and these forces, which get up to all sorts of mischief, are able to interrupt the system and perform the mischievous folly that they engage in. And that is why they're called kishafim, because they, they, they contradict and they deny the work of what is being done in the forces above, meaning in the good side. <speaking in Hebrew> But this will only be according to this measurement. The law your tear and no more. So in other words, these particular demonic forces, evil forces, can only express themselves according to the boundaries, according to what they have been given permission to engage in. The gamba shiur, and even within that measurement, kavarev shar, it's also possible. Shiyithu heim mikoach hazak mehem, that they can be pushed off also from a strength that is more powerful than they are, and their efforts will be held back through the decree of Hashem. And on this, the rabbi said, there is nothing but God, which means to say, there's nothing or nothing except for God, nothing but Him. And Od Milvado comes to teach us that ultimately everything is God. No matter what we see around us is God. God is working around us all the time. When we knocked our foot over the Lego piece that was lying on the ground at 12 o'clock at night because the kids had left the Lego piece lying on the floor and the lights weren't on and the person stumbled over the piece and he uh, tripped and hurt his foot or he stubbed his toe or whatever it may be, this is God also. Everything that is happening to us at every point in time is God. This is the concept of Ein Od Milvador. Whatever is in existence is ultimately God, which means even the aspect of this evil, again, in inverted commas, the concept of this evil is also God. God has allowed these evil forces to exist in the world, but even they have boundaries. And actually, 
if we do what we're supposed to do, with our power, we are able to overcome those evil forces. The afilu, keshafim, and even magic, we're over, able to overcome. Ubiuru rav, and they explained it, that this refers to like a person who has great merits. She minashamayim yatsilu, that from heaven they will save him. Biyitku esharitzim laharalo, and they will push away all the those who wanted to bear it to this particular person. Vuhu mashe kosuv, and that is what is written. Shiny Rabbi Chanina the nefesh zuchusei, that it says in the Gemara that we're going to look at in just a moment in Sanhedrin Samach Zayin Amud Base. That's page sixty-seven on side two. They said about Rabbi Chanina that he was different because. He had great merit, and therefore, even though he was going to be involved in something to do with sorcery, and the rabbis were worried that something's going to happen to him because of the sorcery that will be done to him, and they uh, were, were very worried what's going to happen. Nevertheless, as we're going to see in the story in one second now, that ultimately he wasn't afraid of what would happen. The Gemara says the following: We're taking a look at this Gemara in Sanhedrin, the Samach Zayin Amud base. Where it says a story, Hahi itisa tahaveska mahadra le mishkal afra mitutei kar e de Rabbi Chanina. There was this particular woman that she was attempting to take off the dust from underneath the feet of Rabbi Chanina. What was she taking the dust off for? Example, for what was she? What purpose was she taking the dust off his feet? She was a sorceress. And she wanted the dust in order to perform some sorcery in order to affect Rabbi Hanina. Omar La said Rabbi Hanina to her, E, Mr. Yes, Zili, if you think that you're going to succeed in all of this, go ahead. Zili Avidi, go ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do. Do your sorcery. You think I'm afraid? Ein od mil siv. Rabbi Hanina said to her, Ein od milkva, new bado, that is what is written. There is nothing but God. I'm not afraid of what you're about to try to do to me because I know that only what God allows and only what can be in his mind to exist, that is what will exist. And if it will be that God decides that he doesn't want to affect me, then it doesn't matter what sorcery you try to perform, you'll be unable to do it because I'm above that. I'm living in the world of Ein Od Milvador. There is nothing but God. You're living in the world of sorcery. But you believe that there are all sorts of creatures in the spiritual world that are able to affect me. And I tell you, I live in the world of Ein Od Milvador, in the world where there is nothing but God. Any, says the Gemara, is that so? Ah, how could you make such a thing? How could you, Rabbi Kanina, say such a story? Because this is dangerous. We know that there are these forces out there. Voho ama Rabbi Yochanan. Didn't Rabbi Yochanan say, Lama nikra shman mechashvim? Why are they called mechashvim? What, what does it mean that they're called mechashvim? Shemachishim famalia shamayla. These are the exact words that the Ramchal brought down because they deny the forces of the, of the beings, of the spiritual beings of the, of the, of the worlds above the, uh, the translates here as the heavenly entourage. The forces of evil are contradicting and they want to deny that there are forces of good and they want to make up their own life to perform the folly and the mischief that they want to get up to in the physical world. Now that, for example, often happens. A person bumps his hand or something like that, whatever it is. Although a Nord Milvador, it can be sometimes that there are these spiritual forces which are involved in the folly and the mischief, which ultimately causes this person to have, to have his hand, unfortunately, in the door at the wrong time, and it hurts him. They get up to mischief, as is discussed in the various books of Kabbalah. So says the Gemara at the end, shiny, it's different here, Rabbi Yochanan. And Rabbi Yochanan was worried. Rabbi Yochanan said, how could it be that Rabbi Kanina could play around with the sorceress and say to her, Vakasha, please take the dust from under my feet, perform the sorcery, and we'll see what's going to happen from this. It's dangerous. Who wants to give a weapon into the hands 
of the enemy who knows what's going to happen. And this is exactly what Rabbi Hanina was doing to the sorceress. Answers the Gemara, shiny Rabbi Hanina. Rabbi Hanina is different, meaning he's exempt from the powers of the sorceress. To the fish, to so say, because his merits are many, he has, he has great merits. And therefore, because he's such a great person, the sorceress will be unable to affect him no matter what it is that she tries to do. It's a very beautiful idea. And we'll end off on this idea over here because we're actually at the end of the paragraph. Just a little bit uh, of insight. So we, we basically we're saying over here that ultimately, even though there are these forces of evil that do exist, and the Ramchal has made it clear to us that, the, that these forces do exist, nevertheless, everything is Einod Nilvador. Everything is accordance with what Hashem wants. And ultimately, certainly if we merit it, then it can be that even if there is a sorcery of some kind against a person, he is able to overcome it because his merits are above what the evil is in the world. Einod Milvador. And now we come to the next section, which we're going to start in the next Shi'ur, the Lineder, all being well, which is still in part three, of course. We're going to be discussing more about divine inspiration and prophecy, a very beautiful section over here. And we're going to be discussing the very first topic here is Inyan Ruach HaKodesh, the whole matter of divine inspiration. What is this thing called the Holy Spirit, divine inspiration? What does it mean when we say that somebody has Ruach HaKodesh? And ultimately, what does a person have to do to be deserving of receiving this flux of energy, which is called the Ruach HaKodesh. I thank you for joining me in this Shi'ur in Derech Hashem. I'm Eliyahu Shir from Chesed Ve'emet at www.lovingkindness.co. And if you've enjoyed this Shi'ur and got something out of it, please do like my video and click, uh, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel, and click on the bell to be notified of future Shi'urim. Please feel free to make a positive comment, which is far more that I appreciate than anything else and also to share the video with friends and let them know about these shiurim. Of course, I invite you to become a part of the activities that we're involved in. Please come and check out my site and become a partner in our activities in teaching Torah and the other things that we're involved in, in the videos and the other videos that we're involved in. In the meantime, I look forward to being in touch with you. Feel free to be in touch with me via my website. In the meantime, I wish you everything of the best and I say shalom, shalom, bye-bye.